whoa, whoa, whoa. That is right. That is right, people. Is it right? We're finding out any minute. We are going live. It's time for another guitar lesson. Oh my god, a guitar lesson. Yeah, guitar lesson. Musical alphabet. What have you got? Let's go from the start. A. Beat me to it. A sharp. You can look at the little uh, little thing. The answer's right here. A. A sharp. B. No such thing as B sharp. C. C sharp. D. D sharp. E. No such thing as E sharp. F. F sharp. G. G sharp. A. We're back at the start. Let's descend. So go to that 12th fret on your A string there, okay? 12th fret, A string. A string is the second one from the top there, okay? 12th fret. Look at that double dot. It'll show you where that where that 12th fret is. So you see if we're in tune. Little E string. Ba B string. Bit of cheeky G. So, musical alphabet. If you already know your musical alphabet, great. Let's see you do these. These uh, seventh chords. A7, E7, D7. You know your strumming pattern. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. Do you know your blues form? Do you know your string names? Do you know your finger names? Let's do finger names. Index, middle, <laughs> ring, little finger. Thumb, five, one, two, three, four. All right, bit confusing if you're just listening to the audio version of this, I know, but should we keep going? Parts of the body. Boom, sound hole, frets, fretboard, neck, headstock, body. What kind of guitar is this? It's a uh, feckin', it's not a dreadnought, it's not a classical, it's not a Spanish guitar, it's not a 12 string, it's not a, it's not a 12 string bass. It's, uh, it's not a violin, it is a parlor guitar. So if you play a dreadnought, it's a bigger guitar, it has more lower resonance. If you have a smaller guitar, such as a tenor guitar or violin, it's going to have more high frequency resonance. Okay, musical alphabet, let's go. We did this yesterday, starting on the open A string, going up to 12th fret and back down. Here we go. Say with me, starting on A, going back to A. A, A sharp, B, C, D, E, A, D, D sharp, E, F, F sharp, G, G sharp, A. Now we're going to go down the other way, we're going to use flats just for the crack. So have a look at the sheet here. You see on the black notes, it has two names for every note, okay? Uh, just past the C there, rising in pitch, we have C sharp and D flat. Next one on the black note there, we have D sharp and E flat. Next black note, we have S sharp, G flat. Next black note, we have G sharp, A flat. Next black note, we have A sharp, B flat. Okay, so in some situations, you use different names. People will still know what you're talking about, no matter which name you give it. Alright, <laughs> 12th fret and descent, here we go. A, moving on to the 11th fret now, the A string, we got A flat, 10th fret of the A string, we call that G, moving on to the that dot, that 9th fret dot, we have F sharp, moving on to F, um, which is on the 8th fret, 7th fret is E, 6th fret is E flat, 5th fret as represented by a dot on the fretboard right there, can you see that little dot inlay? 5th fret and the A string is D, down one more to the 4th fret, we got D flat, down one more to the 3rd fret, we got C, down one more, it's not, it's B, down one more, it's C, A sharp, and finally open string, we're back to A, alright. Let's practice our counting. Where are we? One and two and three and four and one and two and three. Okay, we're gonna go through our blues form. All right, we're gonna count, we're gonna play through it. Keep counting. 
One and two and three and four. Get ready to go. One. Get your A7 through and three. Here we go. And four and one and two and three and bar two D7. One and two and three and A for two. One and two and three and four and one and two and three. On to D for two. One D7. Two and three and four and one and two and three and back to A for two. One A7. Two and three and four and one and two and three and turn around E. One and two and three and D7. One and two and three and A7. One and two and three E7. You don't have a guitar, clap along. And four, and one, and two, and three, 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 and four, and one. Move with the music. Two, and three, and four, and one. You can't make that beat one louder than the other beats. How do you do that? Make the other beats quieter. Alright, let's let's try this again from the start. We're just gonna go around and around and around. Let's go over how to do these chords. Just in case this is your first time tuning in, alright? We got A7 A7. We need our middle finger, our ring finger for that. For our middle finger is gonna as you can see on the chart here. Boop, there it is, A7, alright? Middle finger on the D string, second fret, ring finger on the B string, second fret. Alright? Bottom five strings, A7. Let's have a little look at D7. Bottom five strings there. Bottom four strings, excuse me. D7. All right, little little uh, little triangle shape there. We got the middle finger on the second fret, index finger on the first fret, ring finger on the second fret there. <laughs> Try to keep this. We'll try and keep this uh, stuff. Alright. <laughs> so musical alphabet. Oh, something's went wrong. But what went wrong? Okay, we're going to keep going. This is live. This is live. This is not a drill. Alright. Let's keep counting where we're going here. One and two and three and four and one and Pax your strumming pattern three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one. Okay. So let's go over these chords for a million time. A seven. Middle finger, ring finger. Middle finger, second fret, D string. Ring finger, second fret, B string. D7, here we go. Middle finger on that G string. Second fret, index finger on that first fret, B string. And ring finger on that little E string, second fret. And finally, the one you've been waiting for, E7. The chord that keeps moving back. Um, you have two fingers, once again, middle finger and index finger, all right? Index finger on that first fret and the G. Uh, Middle finger on the second fret, A string, and index finger on the first fret. G. Okay, sounds a little something like this. Let's check. See, all our chords are ringing out nicely. This is A seven. Do your chords sound like this? Maybe that little E string isn't ringing out because of the posture of that ring finger. Okay, I don't know if you can see my hand here, but from the, the guitar is staying the same angle my hand posture is lying down and that's what's causing the string, that little E string to be muted. The very bottom of that ring finger, see that bit right there, is lying on that little E string and that's what's stopping it from resonating out clearly. In the same vein, just the, the pad underneath your middle finger right there is lying on that open G string and that's what's stopping that being muted, okay? Allowing that to be muted. So we've got the little, the two strings which are going to be troublesome in this A7 chord are that little G, that G string and that the E string. Alright, so even if you just play the two of them and you can hear or you can see whichever you're into, 
by me relaxing my hand and making it stand up straight at a right angle. Um, it makes all the difference for those strings ringing out. Okay, let's have a little look at that D string. G string's not too bad, D7's not too bad at all because there's not no open strings there, so that's not too troublesome. Next we have our E string. So what's troublesome here with our E string? What can happen for, is our little E can be muted by this just below the where the fingers bend on the palm, just this part of the hand right here. That little fatty bit there or muscle, whichever way you want to think about it, can touch the bottom of the the neck here and it actually mutes, depending on how it's angled, can mute the bottom string there. Alright? So just this part of the hand here. Alright? So we're in our E7 there. and yeah just something to look out for that little E string being muted also the A string the D string can be muted all right because it's right in between these their index and their middle and same again the bottom of that middle finger can mute the string below all right so that's the kind of issues we'll be looking at there all right so now that hopefully all our strings are ringing out nicely we got our fingers right up with that those frets but not touching them that close right there. All right, here we go. So we're gonna keep going around our blues loops. Here we go. Whoa! One and two and three and eight. And one and two and three and four. D7, one and two and three and four. A7, one and two and three and four and one. Two, okay, start again. One and two, starting now, three, A, four, and one, and two, and three, and D7, one, and two, and three, and four, and one, and two, and three, and four, and one, and two, and moving into bar five, D, for two, and two, and three, and four, and one, and two, and three, and A for two. comes a big turn around. E. One and two and three and four and D and two and three and four and A and two and three and four and E and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. Back to A. One and two and three and four. Hopping and hippity hopping around the place. Here, okay, we got some. If you guys figured out whether you want to use a plastic plaque, a metal plaque, or a, a different kind of plaque, our metal plaque is missing for today. But uh, we're going to go through how to hold the plectrum again today. I guess we got our open hand. How do you get now? It's nice to meet you. You're going for the handshake, all right? Now, your thumb, you'll notice, is slightly in front. Alright, okay, this, we're, we're have our handshake, we're holding out, we're, we're nice nice to meet you, there you go. We're going for a fist because maybe the meeting isn't going so well. Meanwhile, our thumb is staying in the same place as it was for the handshake. Alright, so we're retracting in the bottom of our hand as if we're getting ready to box someone because it's not going well. Alright, wherever you are. And now I'm releasing my fist just until the first or the last knuckle, where the nail is on my index finger, is lining up perfectly with my thumb. Can you guys see that there? Um, so, fist. So it's nice to meet you. Hey, Galen, you're looking well. We're doing our fist, and then we're releasing our fist just until that first knuckle lines up with that finger. And then we're going to place the plaque in, and again, a right angle. So, 
think of an L. Alright, so this plaque is going to be pointing directly into our kind of chest and stomach, and this is the motion we're doing right here, okay? Da, 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 da. It's a bit lower, but da, da. it's a swinging, like a pendulum from the wrist, from the elbow, excuse me. And you'll know as you get better and better and better, it's not even so much in the elbow, it's more in the, the wrist and fingers. When you start picking really fast, this is the mo movement you're going to be looking at. So it looks like your hand is spaz spasming out. Okay? Inefficient players will be using their whole arm. Like, Windmills, way! But if you want to play it for like 20 hours a day, you got to be this way. Can you see my hand here? Alright, this is how fast you can play with using flip all energy. Alright, I can keep this going all day, every day. It looks like my hand is barely even moving. Alright? Or can I even do it? If you want to play really fast, you got to use this uh, picking technique. Uh, is that statement true? I'll, I'll pretend it's true for now. Alright, so you want to have as little movement as possible. It's just more or less, and this is the movement right there. And you kind of just pivot in the pivot in the wrist a little bit and. I don't know. You kind of, you'll, it's, it's very slight movement. Let's try this together, okay? We're just going to go down, up, picking. Down, up, down, up, down. It's called, uh, arpeggiated picking, that was called. I've gone blank, but let's just try with, just kind of pick on that little E string. It doesn't matter if you're using your thumb. Just have a little go at a key practicing. Some classical guitarists use the, and bass guitarists use the, pads of their, their fingers there just before the nail hits and they do it like like that and I can if you want triplets you use your okay stay on focus so we got our plaque we got our plaque and we went through how you can make this at home using a, a knife and a old credit card or a leaf card wherever you're into uh, so we're just gonna we're just practicing getting comfortable so we're just gonna hit that big E string you can see on the chart there the B string is the one closest to you it's the lowest one we're just, we're just practicing, and you can apply different amounts of volume. This out of pressure, so you can have it very loud or really, or really light. You can do it real slow. You can do it real fast. Um, but just because it's fast, and just because it's, you can go really softly and very fast, or you can go very slow and very loud. All right, so it's all the options are there. We're just getting, you're just linking. It's just like practicing running or something, you know? You're just practicing and going for your run right now. This is a... Uh, it's like the Olympics. So you're just going down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. Just... It doesn't even matter if it's in time so much right now. It would be great if it was in time. How's it sound now? Let's try to do this time. One, jeepers. One and two and three and four and one and two. This is good if you can do this but I realise that's a bit advanced so just try going down up maybe you might be like this and three and four and down up down up down up you're just working you're just getting that energy moving this is the kind of stuff I love to do while watching the TV or just eating a, eating a breakfast roll or drinking a coffee moving down to that D string just pick a string and just keep plucking it you know uh, it's the kind of thing if you want to be like one of the world's best guitarists ever, you gotta be doing this while you're on the phone to your mate. Like, oh my god, that's so funny, I can't believe that happened. And you gotta have that control as well, to be doing it so almost no one can hear when you're doing it. Do you hear the way I'm getting real quiet? But if I want to, I can get it up real loud, do you know what I mean? And then once you get silly good, you'll be able to do this in time. But right now, we're just building up that... Uh, Building up all those neurotransmitters, all those connections in the brain. Because you've got to build up all these connections in the brain. It'll take, right now, okay, if you do like a MRI brain scan of your brain and do it you know, in six months time after you've been practicing the guitar, you'll notice all this feckin' movement, all these, these movements in the brain where like a part of your brain has, that has never been activated before is being activated. And it's a similar part of the brain, you know, for like conversation, linguistics, communication, and so on. Um, there's so many levels to this, and so many levels to everything. If you're looking to fucking diamond making, uh, how to make coal, and there's just a world of 
information and enthusiasm goes into everything. I'm on, I'm on B string, doesn't matter what string you're on, but we'll just keep plucking away there. Doesn't matter if you're using your thumb and out coin, uh, whatever. You're just learning how to control the, the tools, you know what I mean? It's like fucking slow motion karate, like you don't understand how to do a punch, as you can do a knockout punch at like 8 inches, boo, knock someone out, and they don't like go, if you knock someone out at 8 inches, they don't like fall back, they just hit the ground. Um, now I don't know how to knock someone out at a punch from 8 inch, inches, uh, I don't know anything about physical fights, but what I do know about is guitar playing, and it takes a lot of practice to knock someone out at 8 inches, and it takes a lot of practice to, to be able to talk on the phone and play a little E string. Uh, this one. So right now I'm cheating a little bit. I'm lying the palm of my hand on the bridge, just to fat my hand over. And it's quite an advanced technique, so don't. This will go and take a little bit of time. So you see this little white line right here, which is filed down for the intonation. Intonation is how evenly pitched the guitar is across the way. All right. So I'm just gonna put the tiny little bit of my fat over <laughs> over this hand. You can you can even notice it here. I'm just gonna. Where am I? Can I do this visually that you guys can see? All right. So here's an open string, and I'm gonna put some of my finger across. Do you see where? This line is right here. If I put my finger over this line, it's going to start to mute the string. Okay. So let's try this out. I'm starting to mute it. Do you hear that? The high frequency content is being lowered, and you're getting much more of a dull thud. Depending on how much, where I move the mute. No mute, a little bit of muting, intense muting, and then we get into actually taking a lot of the fundamental note away and improvising some different notes in the harmonic series um, which is something we can talk about in 10 years or something <laughs> right. so you guys just keep you guys just keep practicing there so we're, we're picking away now I'm on the, so basically what I would do is I, just keep playing, play all day, every day if you can. Like, you gotta, you gotta kind of sneak the guitar around with you when no one's looking. Like, you gotta, you gotta be showing up to house parties with a guitar on your back, and everyone's like, "Oh, what are you doing?" There? Meanwhile, you're just doing this, and you're just doing this real quiet, having a sip of your pint or whatever you're into. You're at a house party. You're constantly, pra no matter what you're doing, you're constantly practicing. Do you know what I mean? If you're in school and you want to practice guitar under your chair or at work, you're doing practicing your your finger pattern on the rim of your chair, you're practicing your plec techniques just like this and work non-stop all day long. Um, this is how the greats become the greats. They, they steal time out of everything that they do and they incorporate uh, practice into every aspect of what they're doing. When I was studying for my you know history leave and cert or whatever, I was there on underneath the table going ba 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 and I was listening to the clock go 60 beats per second, and I was going, ba -ba 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 Listen to the teacher going, in 1969, Michael Collins, and I was going, bum, 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 bum. And so I didn't even have to think about it anymore. Do you know what I mean? For the first week or two, I was losing out, and then it's like, oh, my fingers are sore and all this stuff. And then I realized if I do it really, really lightly, I can do it all day long and not have a sore hand. For the first week or so, I was like, going, bah, 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 bah. I'm getting sore and oh, I can't do this anymore. So, and then I realized, apply very little pressure, breathe, listen to what everything's going on in the room. Okay, I am playing my bass guitar. Okay, so, as Jeff. Was it detrimental effects and so on to okay for example uh, in Germany they allow people to sew during their during the class all right which is like sewing and, and knitting and so on so there's a downside to keeping your mind active during history class and so on but it's uh, it's up for debate whether it's going to improve I would say generally at a guess. If you want to be really good at history, don't practice playing guitar during history class. But when you're obsessed about something and you want to be one of the world's best about something, you gotta uh, you gotta do damn things. <laughs> I'm just looking at a cat running around right now. 
It's a bit, bit of domestics going on in the gaff. No cats like fighting with each other. All right. So now what we're going to do is we're going to just practice going between our our A chords and our D sevens and our seventh chords. All right. So what does this mean? We're going to go through our, our basic blues form. You just got to keep doing the same thing again, but making it interesting, stretching yourself a little bit, um, and so on. Getting distracted by some stuff going on inside the podcast here, so I've got to stay focused. Okay, so we're going to try and incorporate some stuff that we're learning right now together to create an exercise. So we're just going to do the major chords, seventh chords, and apply to the blues form with our strumming pattern. Easy peasy. Let's find out. So if we're playing one chord back to back, such as the... Uh, two A's together. The first A is going to be major and the second A is going to be seventh. Okay, does that make sense? So in bar three there we have A and then another A. So the first A would be major, the second A would be a seventh. All right, so this is cool. And for the crack, the very end, don't worry if you don't get this right, it's just a bit of fun. On the, the second E7 there and the turn around, second E is going to be an E7. That's in bar 12, all right? Here we go. Um, one, every time. One and two, eh, 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 and four and one and two and three and D. One and two and three and four. Here is two A's. The first A is major. So next A is seven. Here we go. Seven and two and. And four, two D's coming up D and two and three and four D seven one and two and three and four back to A two A's one and two and three and A seven one and two and three and four turn around E one and two and three and four and D and two and three and four. way to, to change between uh, a chord and its relevant seventh okay 
um, right now. Okay, so here we go. How do we change from A to A7? So here's A. So the change from A to A7, if you look at uh, over here, we have the seventh version, and over here we have the major version. Okay. So they're both on the screen there. It's on YouTube. This is party lesson. Speaking Stephen guitar lessons. All right, free first hundred hours. All right, so we are looking at how to change between a uh, ret major chord and a seventh chord. All right, here we go. So here's our A. So we have our staircase. We got our index finger on the second fret, middle finger on the second fret, ring finger on the second fret of the guitar. Now, if we want to make a change to the seventh chord, we simply lift up our index finger and move our middle finger up one. And then we get our A7. Okay, let's try that again. So we are, we're in our A chord, A major chord, and we want to go to the seventh. We simply lift up our index finger and move up our middle finger towards the sky one string. Okay, so let's hear that again. A. And then we're going to go to seventh. We lift up our index finger and lift up our middle finger up to the next string. Lovely bit of suspense there. And we'll, let's say we want to go back to A. How do we do that? We bring our middle finger back down to where it was in that G string second fret and put our index finger back where it was. So our ring finger is constantly uh, attached to the guitar, okay, for this, for this movement. Here's me changing between the two real quick. Have a little look at D and D7. Okay, let's try these. Here's D, bottom four strings only because it's a D chord, part of that D family. Now, our thumb is going to stay the same and we're going to move. The best, the way I'd recommend it is moving your middle finger, keeping your thumb where it is, moving your middle finger up to where your index finger was, and then it kind of puts all the rest of your fingers in the right position for that move. So put your index finger in that position where your middle finger was. Okay, we're in D, we're going to move to D7, how do we do that? We put our middle finger where our index finger was, and then we just do the rest of it. So now our index finger is ready for that B string first fret, and our ring finger is in that uh, little E string second fret, okay? There we are. Now we want to go back to D from D7, we put our index finger where our index finger was, put our ring finger on that B string 3rd fret and put our middle finger on that little E string 2nd fret alright man cats are great aren't they I can't take my eyes off and they're just jumping around the garden just having a great time uh, alright and then finally E here's E and to E7 you simply lift up that ring finger that was easy wasn't it there's E then we want to go to E7 just lift up that ring finger here's that difference again major Seven. Here we go. Seven. Okay. So that's how to change between the chords. There. You just got to keep practicing, keep practicing, keep practicing. I think it's it's um I think because it's a learning lesson and it's, it's quite hard to take new information in. So uh, you guys in the comments will basically I'll put out all this content and the cream of the crop will rise to the top you know the, the best t 10 lessons I do will rise to the top and so on so um, we'll just see what happens we're going to do hopefully a half hour lesson not every day but most days I'll do uh, I'll put out a music lesson of some description just for 30 minutes on some uh, thing related to music in some way uh, because it's so hard and frustrating trying to find uh, a music teacher. Do you know what I mean? Because a lot of music teachers... <laughs> life gets in the way of their music. Do you know what I mean? I'm someone who has been fortunate enough to, to play music almost every day in my life for at least three hours. Because for me, that's my like my number one priority since I was a kid, pretty much. Um, everything else kind of took a back seat. Um, and because of that, I have uh, progressed very quickly through music and some people think, some people said stuff to me like of the best years in Ireland and so on. I don't, that's just people, you know, people when they've had a few points. Basically some people think I have very good ears, okay? Um, and that didn't happen by accident, that happened from, um, for a lot of reasons which I'll get into and so on. But all I'm trying to say is basically, 
I myself have been a very frustrated student because I couldn't find teachers who were into music as much as I was. I'd ask them questions like uh, about MIDI and, and or about the emotional content of a song and they would just be quoting other people and so on. I don't know. Listen, there's a lot, there's a lot of feelings involved in music. No one can understand all of music because it's just too much for anyone to get in one lifetime. So uh, all I want you to do is just stay inspired. Just, just hold the guitar while you're watching TV. That's all I ask. Just hold, just put the guitar in your lap and just feel your way around. Just, just have a go. Just playing one string for a little while. Just get used to it. It's gonna take a long, long time to get used to. It. It's like you know, making, making love with. Uh, someone you love or for the first time like it's not going to be great the first two times it's going to be very awkward the lights might be on the might lights might no, no, not be on but then after you've been practicing you know like making love to each other for a year or two you both become really fucking good at it uh, you both know what each other want and so on and then it comes to the case where if you meet another lover they just can't compete with the person you've been loving for years because they don't know what makes you tick and so on so that's all I have to say. Goodbye. I appreciate you. And I know you guys can do it. I have no doubt in my mind. All right. If you apply yourself.